This episode's FTR shoutout goes to Aiden Bird. Leave a comment down below to have a chance for a shoutout in the next episode. Make sure you're subscribed. What's up, Cory Gang? It's your boy Chris back with another FTR. It seems like these days, these videos are all you want from me. That's okay. That's all right. That's why I'm here. That's what I'm here for. Isn't that right, Rapashi? That's why we're here, right? Just to do FTRs. That's that's our whole existence. Where are you trying to go? You wanna drop? Oh, oh. Fish Tank Review, episode 21. Oh yes, The Office. Oh man. Well, your boy Chris is one of the biggest The Office fans I've... W Okay, I've watched the whole thing from the first episode to the last season, last episode, total of four times. So there are a lot of things that I can quote directly from the show. If you haven't watched The Office, it's a slow start, I'll give you that. But once you get started, once you get to know the characters a little bit, it starts rolling and you never want it to end, baby. Isn't that right, Rapashi? Now this guy's been re-watching The Office for the fifth time and only just noticed that Dwight has a piranha in a small tank with no heater or filtration. Come on, man. I noticed that in the first time I rewatched it out of four times. I guess I have to watch it another time to beat this person because they watched it five times. I'm not about to get beaten by some random Redditor. But yeah, that's a horrible tank, especially for a piranha. Piranhas eat pretty big meals and those meals are pretty high in protein. And when protein comes out in poop form, that stuff produces nitrates and then ammonia like nothing else. So it's imperative that you not only move that piranha into a bigger tank, but also provide enough filtration for it. And I guess Scranton, Pennsylvania isn't always really cold. I think it's kind of like a temperate place um, where there is a winter, because I've, I've seen winter on that show. It does look pretty cold. So unless it's uh, summertime, there really should be a heater in that tank. Albeit Dwight was not regional manager for long because... In the arms of the that was a far jump. Dwight was not regional manager of Dunder Mifflin for very long because of various reasons. So maybe he moved his piranha back to like a bigger tank in his house, the main tank. He does have piranhas on his farm. This is a little bit of a flaw in the character, I feel like. Someone like Dwight would definitely know the nitrogen cycle because it's pretty cool. He would find that stuff really cool. And that would have been amazing if Dwight was like an expert fish keeper on the show, just started explaining away the nitrogen cycle and all sorts of things that are, you know, actually truthful. And maybe even going off at someone saying a goldfish can be kept in a bowl. Maybe like Oscar or Angela would keep a goldfish in a bowl and then Dwight would come over and be like, you know that thing needs 20 gallons? Michael? Anyway, if you can't tell, I'm a huge office geek. So, moving on. Big shout out to my awesome patrons, Corvus Austin, Daniel Thomas, Cranium Rex, Spoiled Splendid, K, Ferraris, Aquatics and Exotics, Clara, Hydrogen Dragon, Chad Crotz, Savannah G, Kristen Cavalieri, and Dave Yang Photo. Without you guys, this channel would not be running as smoothly as it is. And also without you guys watching and supporting me every episode and every video along the way, I wouldn't be able to combine my hobby with YouTube and sharing it on the internet. So I am heckin' thankful for all of you, each and every one of you. Yes, you, the one watching right now, you, yeah. Now my friend, uh, King Tofu, shout out King Tofu, he sent me this uh, meme on Facebook and it goes, absolutely no one. Mom at Aquarium. That one tastes best to steamed with it. green onion and ginger. I love it. This is definitely what my mom would say randomly if she was at the aquarium. She'd be like, oh, that one tilapia. I love to eat that one. And my dad would be like, yeah, tilapia. Very good, very good. Green onion and ginger and soy sauce. Cook it up in the wok. Beta, like alpha, beta, gamma, beta, in a jar that's 90% full of a rock. <laughs> I set up this little zen corner in our bedroom. How about I say nothing about that weird, ugly looking vase and you take that rock out. While you're at it, take the beta out. Give it to one of your friends who can actually keep fish. Cause really there's nothing zen about that corner of your bedroom, man. There's nothing zen about fish abuse. You know what's more zen than that corner of your room? When a eight-year-old is playing Fortnite and has almost won the whole round, number one place, 
and his mom unplugs the Wi-Fi router because it's his bedtime. His reaction to that is more zen than what the heck you have going on in this corner. She insists that it's a 60 liter, 15 gallon, thank you for the conversion by the way, I only know gallons even though I'm metric system all the way. And that is only guppies in there, even though people are telling her it's not. Man, this person might be crazier than the last person who thought that corner was zen. How the hell are those guppies? I mean, there might be a few guppies, but most I see are either platies or molly or a gourami or tetras. I mean, I don't know if it's a 15 gallon. Maybe it is, maybe it's not. It's a little bit hard to tell with the picture. It's probably smaller than a 15. If the pearl gourami is that big, that tank is very doubtfully a 15 gallon. But the craziest thing is, she thinks all those fish are guppies. <laughs> what is she watching? That guppy show for kids? Not every fish is called a guppy, okay? Oh look, a black guppy. Oh look, a silver guppy. Oh look, a blue and red guppy. No. 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 Upgrade. Hashtag upgrade. Hashtag mansion. Boy, I do not want to know how that fish previously lived. I don't want to know either, dude. This guy looks like the person in the last FTR who thought he was doing aquaponics. So he must also have recently visited Hawaii, came back and be like, I need more luau in my life, baby. Looks at his sad looking fish tank. I'm gonna add a flower hula hoop thing. Luau. Upgrade mansion. If this is a mansion, I didn't know that my fish were living in basically a whole planet to themselves. Like if that's a mansion, my 12 gallon here, which isn't even that big relatively to a lot of other tanks out there. This thing is like the whole of heaven for only $59.95 USD, which is like much more in Canadian by the way. You too can create your own Olympic diving pool aquarium for your beloved fish. I don't know why I said aquarium like that. That sounded kind of funny. I love the concept. It's it's amazing. You add the stairs and then it's a it's one of those jumping boards. Wow, beautiful. I love it. Such a good concept. And it's only 59.95 USD. Wow, I love it. This fish is so lucky. It's living in this mansion of an aquarium. I'd be surprised if whichever company made this isn't bankrupt already. I'd be very surprised if it even made two sales. Okay, two sales. Now I know I'm in this subreddit, but this is literally, <laughs> this is literally the name. And I don't think it's that bad, honestly. It looks like a planted tank. It looks like it's got a lot of plants in it. There's a vibrant light taking care of those plants. And it doesn't look overfilled either. Like at least it's not teeming with goldfish, okay? I can't even see a fish in there. So as far as I know, it might just be plants. And what's wrong with sitting on the pooper while enjoying some fish tank? Probably better than being on your phone and sitting on the pooper by accident for like two hours because you're watching YouTube videos. I find this to be a bit healthy, except, okay, there's that thing, you know, where like, you know when people say you flush with the seat like open, then all the gross bacteria actually like gets flushed out into the air and it just like coats the surfaces in your washroom. I feel like the bacteria is going into the water, like fecal bacteria. Let's not get into this too much. I'm just gonna not recommend this even though it seems like an okay idea. Don't do it. Mutual friends, snap friend. Should I school her? Send me honest messages. Yes, you should definitely school her. School the heck out of her if you know exactly what she's doing wrong. But here's something that I found in the comments of this picture that makes a lot of sense. Yes, but please be kind and informative. If she feels like you are yelling at her, she will probably just brush you off as an overreacting jerk and she will angrily keep things the same. I would tell her that her fish are beautiful and they can live a really long time, but they probably will have a hard time lasting a year in that bowl. Try kindly to get her to emphasize with having nowhere to swim and nothing enriching in their environment. You can also mention how dirty goldfish are and how getting a tank with a filter will both make their upkeep easier and make them happier fish. She still might not listen, but maybe she will. I really like this response. Yes, this is a good response. If you're too aggressive, she'll just go lol or whatever and ignore it. Very true. But if you but if you make her understand how miserable her fish must be, then she'll hopefully do more research and change. Worse, if someone is too aggressive, the person on the receiving end might keep doing what they are doing out of pure spite. That is very true. A lot of truth in this 
Reddit post. Yet another piece of from Pinterest. I like Pinterest, but some people are idiots. Yes. Flower horns are so powerful and active. They are very powerful and very active. Putting a powerful and active fish like a flower horn that you know is powerful and active into a five gallon? Looks like a five gallon. Honestly, I'm pretty sure that flower horn moves more than the cat. So, so the cat should be in the tank and the flower horn should be out if you're gonna play this game. Reverse the roles and suddenly everyone's upset. And suddenly everyone has common sense. I bet this guy has enough common sense to be like, cats can't go in five gallon tanks. Hello fellow Redditors, can I offer you a drink? This caption doesn't even make sense, what do you mean? Are you treating your fellow Redditors as a dog? Here's the comment associated with this uh, picture. Sorry if this has been posted before, searched it up and couldn't find it. Context, guy has a record of crappy tanks. He states in the video that it's so his dog can have some eye candy and look at the fish while drinking water. That is five out of five, 2000 out of 2000, an excuse and has just very illogical, okay? So not only is it fish hell for the sake of the dog getting a little entertainment, but I think the dog would find a wok or an egg carton with kibble and peanut butter in it about 10 times more enriching than this. It's also uncycled and contains an air stone but no filter, so ammonia burns for all. He also states that the air stone keeps the fish happy and healthy. Well, if he thinks his dog is getting a kick and eye candy out of looking at a fish while drinking water, it's not too far for him to think an air stone will keep the fish happy and healthy. Cherry on top. The guy keeps picking up Squidward's house and calling it Patrick's house. Okay, this guy is evil. Okay, this guy is next level. Get your SpongeBob references correct. Patrick doesn't live in the Easter Head house. Are you dumb? This is another level of, uh, no, leave SpongeBob alone. I gotta be Zen like that Zen corner. Oh wait, it has no Zen. All right, our first tank sent in by Chewy's Bro Aquatics. Nice big angel, nice big gourami, nice big Chinese algae eater. Oh no, that thing is getting big. I told you guys, don't say I didn't tell you. They get pretty massive. I wonder if it started to suck slime coat when it's nighttime and they're all sleeping. Chewy's Bro Aquatics, please tell me the good news. It has not attacked your fish yet. Hopefully, if it does, Pull that thing out, man. Sure, it's keeping the tank clean now, but it gonna be cleaning your fish up soon. Anyways, the hardscape is nothing to laugh at. Look at those dragon oko stones. Look at those. I think those are seiryu stones. Got that dark substrate. This is a bowfront tank, no doubt. Pretty big, I'd say like 50 gallons at least. But this tank is pretty tall, so it's really hard to aquascape tall, as I said before in my other videos. It is lacking a little bit in the vertical side in terms of scaping and also that yellow little devil there, the Chinese algae eater. I'm not too down for that, so 4.3 out of 5. Next tank is from Christopher Davis. Going for, I would say, black water-ish. You got the almond leaves. The wood is pretty mossed up, a newbiest up. And I think that's a either a Siamese algae eater or a flying fox or an odo. It kind of reminds me of a flying fox right now. I hope it's not. My favorite thing about this tank is definitely that crypt. What a show stealer. It's gonna get more massive and send out runners and cover your tank along with the dwarf sag. For now I'm giving it a 4 out of 5. Let it grow out. Cover some of the bare ground and bearscape. You have yourself a lovely tank in no time. Next is Donovan Jones. This tank is covered to the brim with guppy grass and other floaters like Elodia, Hornwort I think he said. There's also some yarn on the bottom and Marimo moss balls and this is all for just breeding purposes. He says there's thousands of invertebrates of all kinds breeding in here, snails, shrimp, you name it. And then this is a outside sort of uh, tub where he's again breeding a lot of different things with the different floaters. And there's a couple of green tree frogs that like to hang out in here. He says that they're really friendly, really tamed down. They come find his hand every time you put his hand in. Really cool. Now it's a little difficult to rate these sort of tanks. Um, I really like them. They're interesting to me, but the scape is, you know, it's not for everyone. But for me personally, I do like the wild overgrown scape. I know it just doesn't really have that much effort put into it because it's just like a you put it in and let it go sort of thing. Um, maybe do a water change every week. But I do like that. He's got the natural look. He's breeding all sorts of things. Got some frogs in there getting 
creative, letting things go. I like that feel. So again, 4.3 out of 5. Great job. Now, hopefully I'm not saying this name wrong. Uh, Jose Ortez sent in this next tank. So safe to say everything is artificial here and the water is not actually filled up yet, but this is just the hardscape before the water goes in and the fish go in, I'm guessing. Now, you know I won't go over a three out of five most of the time for artificial, especially 100% artificial, but I think you guys may be thinking what I'm thinking. He made the best out of artificial things. This looks as natural as artificial can look. He's even got the little path that some aquascapers like to make with the uh, uh, different shapes and colors of gravel. He's got a little bit of a stone hardscape going on and the plants are very naturally placed. They reflect a natural look, unlike, you know, the use of pink gravel and pink and purple fluorescent plants. But instead of doing that with artificial things, he did what he could in order to make things look good. So not only am I going over three, I'm going over 3.5. I'm giving this a 4 out of 5. This is clearly someone who wants a natural looking tank, but didn't have either the interest to keep live plants, because not everyone's going to be interested in that, or someone who just couldn't afford to, you know, get all the necessary things to keep live plants alive. Next tank is from Nemo Alexander. Now, before I forget, I think that catfish is called a qu quick qui catfish. I'm not sure. <laughs> Got an albino quarry gang. I think that's a pea puffer, or it might actually be something bigger than a dwarf pea puffer. I'm not sure what it is. Anyways, it's planted pretty well. I think that's the first kind of that catfish that I've received as a tank submission. So this is definitely very unique. There's even a backdrop of like a stone backdrop. Those are always neat. Personally, I think you can do a lot more with this tank in terms of scape. So right now I'm giving it a four out of five. I think a brighter light allows for a better presentation and some better plant growth. Next we have Nicholas Plamondon. I don't know if it's on purpose or accidental, but the scape of this tank leans upwards to the right. And I really enjoy that. Kind of a little sad looking Anubis in the corner there. The neons are bright and colored up. I think that might be columnaris, I'm not sure. You gotta be careful with that. The glass is a bit scratched up and this, you know, this takes me back to my 40 gallon. I got it second hand and who knows what the heck it's been through because the glass for that tank is also scratched up pretty similar to this. Pretty sure it's when they're trying to scrub the algae off and a little bit of debris gets stuck between the scrubber and the glass. That always makes for a really bad time. So I feel you on that one. Just need a little bit of TLC, tender love and care all throughout the different features of this tank. Right now, I'm giving it a 4.1 out of 5. Next, we have Paul W from Germany. Quite a nice clean look to the tank. It's a small tank. I think it's got snails and shrimp in there. I'm not sure, but I do know it doesn't look to me like there's any fish in there. Nice use of hornwort, even though I don't really appreciate the plant, but you made it work here. Marimo moss ball, very simple, but elegant scape that works. And as you can see, this tank is not just a tank, but a decoration in a living room or some sort of living space in the house. No doubt makes a more cozy, more vibrant, colorful, space to live in. I really appreciate the scape, I really appreciate the placement of the tank itself, and how you've used that to make your house better. 4.75 out of 5, good job. Buzz underscore stop underscore guy sent me this picture of a fish tank with like six parrots, seven parrot cichlids, seven. Pleco, god knows what else is in there, and a huge arowana. At first, the arowana was so big I thought it was part of the trimmings of the tank, and then after I counted how many parrot cichlids are in there, I noticed the arowana. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. By golly is it big. It's one of the worst tanks that he's seen. It's one of the worst tanks that I've seen. That fish is probably not cheap, just guessing. I hope this tank has been upgraded into a bigger enclosure. I feel for these fish, man. They have zero room to swim and they have so little water that the nitrates definitely just build up. If you're complaining about how much waste goldfish produce, goldfish ain't as big as an arowana or seven parrot cichlids. Pup B sent me this meme and this is just a play on how some people can be untruthful about what their appearance might look like online through dating websites and whatnot. The fish sent a picture of itself looking like a goldfish, all fancy and nice. And the person caught the bait and reacted like, wow, you are very pretty. And then the goldfish said, thank you, but it's actually a catfish and looks <laughs> super derpy. But you know what? 
I actually like it the other way around. Like I find the catfish more attractive than the goldfish. So it actually took me a while to get this meme. I'm like, hmm? Hey, you're like Jordan's on Saturday, bro. Should not be quoting anything from Chris Brown. I'm sorry. In Facebook, and I see this image. Really, you work for Facebook, bud? You are in Facebook, like the headquarters? This looks very DIY. Like, disregard the goldfish for a sec, because we all know that's just not how you do it. There's probably no filter, no heater, nothing. But it could pass as a shrimp tank or snail tank, a nice planted tank. Yeah. I'm down. Just trying to imagine someone wearing that though and just trying to walk. That is at least a gallon of water you're hauling around per step. It's like Goku putting on like the weighted weights. It's like Goku putting on the weighted jackets and wristbands, moving like a normal person. You get like mad calves. Your calves would increase like tenfold. Of course, with nothing alive in it, please, no. My mom goes to fish tank. Roseanne, I've always wanted to eat this fish. <laughs> Wish her dad in an aquarium and the mom is just like more focused on like what she could have eaten. <laughs> that is hilarious. All you're thinking about is, oh, my dream is to eat that fish. I mean, that's probably not what aquariums are intended for to like advertise to buy fish to eat. Okay, what's up? Yeah, eating good. Oh man. What's in the drink, my dude? Pretty crappy of you. Why would they do this? These kids, man. I know I'm behind the times, but I guess TikTok is the next, the new Vine. Here's another one. Holy crap. There's male beta, female beta. I'm guessing this tank gets not bigger than 15 gallons. You know what? F TikTok. People been sending me like nightmare fish tanks. They gotta moderate that stuff, man. Is it like a free-for-all posting site where you can post anything? I'm pretty sure they need to have some limitations, including fish abuse. They're called beta, but they're also called Siamese fighting fish. Fighting fish for a reason. Why not put a beta in something smaller than a cup they came in? <laughs> Preach it, man. That thing is smaller or like the same size as the bowl that or the cup that the beta would come in if you purchased it. Facebook wants to ask, is this still available? I need automation to get so smart to be like, to, to recognize that this tank is not good enough for a beta fish. And the auto message should instead recommend, can you not advertise this as a beta bull? And can you spell beta correctly? This is the second event like this that I've seen. The first event, someone DM'd me and let people know to boycott the event. It was very similar to this. Animal abuse, fun for the kids. Because everyone loves animal abuse. Kids 12 and under try to catch 1,002 goldfish swimming in the pool with their bare hands. Why is it 1,002? And are you actually gonna count that many goldfish? Please, no glass containers. What are they supposed to do? Just scoop them up and put it in their mouth like a pelican? Just keep it in the mouth. See how long you can hold it in your mouth. Fun for the family, actually, not just for the kids. Pretty sure daddy over there can fit like five in his mouth before puking. Uncle Mike's got that sick magic trick where he can swallow the goldfish and puke it up afterwards. This one gets to me. We rescued these hardy goldfish from an outdoor fish pond on our property where they somehow survived year round in muddy water. We got them a 10 gallon tank and pump but now we're ready to send them on to the next family. I want to throw up and die at the same time. So what you're telling me is you abducted or stolen these fish from, I don't know, your neighbor or the city, whoever put these goldfish in, from a pond? They were stalked in the pond by someone, on purpose. City design, probably. They somehow survived year round. Somehow they survived year round. They weren't supposed to, apparently. Muddy water. Let me tell you, ponds aren't that clear. Oh my gosh. I'm trying to think of an equivalent sort of like example to, to symbolize the dumbass thing that they just did. I can't, I can't think of anything. No one's ever been this dumb before. Please put the goldfish back where it came from. You are so ignorant and arrogant of your ways. You think you know everything and you think you're doing a favor to these goldfish. Do your own research, buddies. I think the heat is getting to me. Here's an interesting scoop. PETA is now suggesting people to put male betta fish with other fish. Many people mistakenly believe that betta fish must be kept in solitary confinement. Why don't you just say they should be kept alone? Who writes these things for PETA? Female bettas can live together while male bettas will fight with other male bettas. They can be placed singly in a community aquarium containing other species of fish. Yep, they are not wrong about that. This is actually good. I thought PETA wouldn't even allow any fish to be in tanks in the first place, but this is surprisingly um, accurate except 
the picture with the angelfish. I really don't think angelfish are the go-to species to put with a betta. Like that's not the first fish that comes to mind. It's, it shouldn't be on anyone's top list for a community betta tank to put an angelfish in it. If you're putting a betta in a community tank, you really want to make the stocking choices work for the betta. I always suggest passive non-fin nipping dither fish like neon tetras and they both benefit from black water, it would be perfect. It is a good example, even if you're, you know, passionate about something, you might not be an expert on it. First tank sent in by Anthony Dutton. This is of his 24 gallon DIY CO2 rig. His kabamba is growing lush and I think the carving plant is, I don't want to say dwarf sage. It might be hair grass or chain swords. Nice textures, nice different colors of the plants. I like the use of the backdrop. It adds to the scape in a very natural way. The hardscape of the rocks is also enjoyable and the cherry reds are definitely red. It's also quite hard again to aquascape higher. This tank is definitely a little bit taller Taller, but you've been able to successfully fill out sections of this tank on the taller side of things by placing some hardscape in the background taller and also letting the plants reach higher. This is a very nice effort. 4.8 out of 5. Good job. Our next tank is sent in by Aquascaping101. Right off the bat, there is a sort of algae problem at hand right now. I hope that gets sorted out to maybe by snails, shrimp, Siamese algae eater, odosynclus, or maybe just going in there and removing it mechanically. But the plants themselves are gorgeous, they're lush, the Anubius Mana Petite is just growing very nice. I uh, think that's, that might be Rotala, might be some sort of moneywort, I'm not sure about that. There's definitely Ludwigia here and there, and some, that looks like a species of Hydrocaudal. Not sure at all what the foreground plan is. Um, I want to say baby tears, but I could be super wrong about that. The hardscape of the wood, nice curve. There's some plants all the way in the back. Not even going to try to identify that. Maybe you guys on Discord can help you plant specialists. A very obvious nutrient-rich substrate is used. I think this tank is designed by ADA as well. Very fancy, very fancy Aquascaping 101. I mean, Aquascaping is in the username, so you know it's got to be good. I think this has a potential of reaching 5 out of 5, but the algae is really putting it off, so I'm going to go with 4.75 for this time. Good job. Next tank is sent in by Devin LaBelle. Whoa, this is a new one. This is pretty darn colorful right here. I don't know if this was color enhanced via editing softwares, but still very impressive that these colors can pop. Must be a really good light, very healthy feeding of the fish, and vibrant colors of the plants really make it pop. I really like the little attention to detail here, little marimo moss balls here and there, there's a tiger lotus, some crypts. One thing though, I'm not sure if you know, but those torpedo barbs get pretty darn big, or they're also called Denisoni barbs. They will not fit in this tank come, you know, a year later. So I would suggest looking to upgrade them or either give them away, get a new tank for them. Hopefully this is a grow out tank. Hey, there's a Nubius attached to the hardscape as well, so. These tanks are hitting a lot of good spots and hitting a lot of good scores. 4.75 out of 5. Let's go. Next tank is from Ishikama Kito. The scape does a uh, reflecting natural kind of scape, except the blue bits of gravel in the bottom I'm not so sure of, but this is reminiscent of a sort of uh, local pond or river system. Plants are live plants and they're growing pretty well. And here's the betta, the centerpiece fish. It looks gorgeous. Look at those colors. That is a stunning centerpiece fit. Good job Ishikama, 4.25 out of 5. Now I'm doing a new thing here. This is sent in by Tristan von Boxstahl. Hopefully I pronounced your name correctly. But yes, this is a terrarium, a bioactive terrarium with live plants, live uh, immersed growing plants, so land plants. And this is for a crested gecko. So this is a sort of arboreal setup that scapes taller than it is wide. This is Tristan's crested gecko Pluto. Such a robust, cute looking dude and an awesome name. I would have never thought to name my crested gecko after a planet. Thanks so much for sending this in. And your bioactive terrarium, or should I call it vivarium? I'm not even sure the proper terms. That is goals right there. I want to know what those plants are. I want to get those plants for myself and set up such a awesome and nice enclosure for Rapashi. You guys, they hit me up with some tips, man. I'm in a lot of need to like try to save some money, but also try to do it right, get all the good plants and get 
all the necessary things to take care of the plants. Anyways, I'm getting carried away. This tank is really awesome. I'm hesitant to rate it, to give it a serious rating, because I really don't know what I'm talking about right now. So I'm going to be giving you a 4.9 out of 5, and it's just that little hesitant, like, because <laughs> I don't know what the heck I'm talking about, right? But you guys in the comment section, Feel free to educate me. Next tank is sent in by Yannick Bruce. I don't know what it is about this picture. Maybe it is also the perspective of the picture being taken at this very spot, but it just looks like his tank is like this overgrown forest and we're right in the middle of it. And we just encounter a nice school of, I think that's lamb chop raspora. There's also blood fins. Actually, that might be CPDs. There's also a beta there. Nice textures from the Ludwigia, some crypts going on, Java Fern, Java Moss, some Anubis Nana Petite, some floaters up top, the lighting is dynamic, nice nutrient substrate where the plants are, and then the clearing where the sand is. I mean, it's a little rough on the edges, but really nice concept of escape. Really nice place to take a photo of your scape, so I really appreciate that. Always gotta be mindful of how you showcase your tank. Yannick, you did a really good job, 4.5 out of 5. Fish tank review. Finally, another fish tank review. Please don't. Oh shoot! Oh shoot! Dang! Did you see? It? I'm gonna I'm gonna rewatch that. Let's let's rewatch that. Oh my gosh! That is a good hit. Okay, I've underestimated Beta. I don't ever see them fight other fish. That's just not what I look for in a video. Not what I want to see. So the borderline just became this regular fish to me that isn't really aggressive because I never get to see it. And I started to underestimate the fighting ability of the Siamese fighting fish. But dang, I really thought that turtle, I mean, I feel like that's a snapping turtle. Maybe, I'm not sure. I'm not an expert at turtles. Go to the turtle girl for that. That was a right hook, a, a solid jab into the face. Clip the chin for sure, man. Just like, I'm, I'm not a fighter. That is impressive that a pet of fish can do that. That's amazing. But now I feel like if the owner has not learned the lesson, please remove the fish because I don't think that fish is gonna last another few rounds with that turtle. I mean, that snap, that jaw, if that gets around the fish anywhere, that fish is dead, okay? This was a horrible idea. I'm really glad I didn't see what I thought I was gonna see. I mean, it was not flagged as NSFW or like gore or anything. So I was really curious. I knew I wasn't going to see a dead fish or a fish getting killed, but I didn't expect the beta to destroy the turtle. This is a drawing from Emily Costley of, I'm guessing, her axolotl. And guess what? This is her axolotl. Can you see the, can you see the similarities? That's amazing. It's like the same picture. Very good job. And your axolotl is very cute. Five out of five for the axolotl. My best friend from years ago posted this. Why do I have a feeling they're not your best friend anymore? She told me that the Petco Specialists, I didn't know that was a title, but okay, helped her set everything up and that her fish looks very happy. Whenever someone says a fish looks very happy, you gotta double check on that statement and double check on the emotional well-being of that person because it's really hard to gauge how happy a fish looks. They don't have face muscles that allow them to show happiness by curling up their lips. This is my new fish, Mia. She is a gold fish and I love her so much. You do, huh? I made everything look so nice for her homecoming. I got her at a fair today. Okay, she is just a baby, but she is going to get huge. Yes, she is going to get huge. I'm glad you acknowledge that. So hopefully you'll be upgrading that tiny little tank. She is in the corner of you can't see her. So number one, fair, why? That's, that's a big no-no. Never get a fish from a fair. Never put fish in a fair if you run the fair at any capacity. And also, why is the photo sideways? Can you not? Here, let me, let me fix this. Did I edit? Did I do the thing? I hope I did. If I didn't, I was too lazy. She is in the corner of you can't see her. Think you meant to say so you can't see her. I get it. It's actually not a bad idea to give your small baby goldfish a grow out tank, but that grow out tank needs to have a filter and it needs to have more water than that. This looks to me like a 10 gallon. Fill it up all the way so that you can use all of the space of the 10 gallon and definitely have a fish tank ready so that when your goldfish grows bigger, it can actually get upgraded and 
you're not just saying you'll upgrade it. But I mean, I really don't doubt that you do want the best for your fish. Probably just misinformed and misinformed by the Petco specialists. Saw these in Cabo San Lucas for sale. Hopefully it has its own filtration system and some instructions on how to take care of the fish. Now the fish there is probably Gararuffa, which is a fish that people use, especially in Japan and other like spa places to use to like clean the dead skin off of your body, um, most cases your feet. And they do eat the dead skin cells and it's okay for that fish. We used to sell them in a fish store that I used to work at and they're super cool. When I was cleaning the water, they would come up to my hands and just, you know, suck the dead skin off of my hands. It's a really interesting feeling, doesn't hurt at all. But yeah, as long as, you know, you are taking care of the fish, you're giving them supplemental feeding, not just <laughs> eating all your dead skin, that there's adequate filtration, that the temperature is going to be uh, high enough for them. You're doing water changes, treating it basically like a fish tank. But you know what? I'm pretty sure the people who are buying this has no idea how to keep fish. So this is actually a bad idea. This is just gonna kill all the fish in there. And please don't tell me that the people selling these are instructing their customers to restock the tank once all the fish are dead. I don't wanna think about it, let's move on. Poor fish, yes, poor fish. Guys, don't get this, okay? I see that it's in Spanish. I'm gonna search up how to say don't get this fish tank in Spanish. How to say don't get this fish tank in Spanish. No consigas esta pecera. Fluent Spanish speaking people, please don't kill me for that pronunciation. <laughs> Probably butchered it to hell. Well, at least now you remember, don't get the fish. Don't get the fish tank. Found out a dollar mart holds at most 0.25 gallons. What is a dollar mart selling this stuff? Miniature pet aquarium. That's a turtle. There's a chameleon and a Pac-Man frog. A Pac-Man frog looks small, but it's still gonna need more room than that. They actually move around. I should recommend at least a 20 gallon for one adult Pac-Man frog. Chameleon, are you kidding me? <laughs> These things get huge. This is, even the smallest variety of turtle is not gonna be able to live in that. This is like a carrier maybe, just for you know a few hours if you're taking it back home or transferring it if you're moving houses, maybe. This is frustrating. I really hope people aren't dumb enough to fall for this. Dollar stores, stop. Stop selling this stuff. Nobody needs it. My friend's beta container. Well, that cat knows what's up. That cat's like, dude, get it a better home. What are you doing? What is that, like three gallons? Dude, you got three gallons worth of the fish tank. You're only using 1.5 gallons. Get your act together, buddy. Also, feed me more cat food. Is something wrong with the year, actually? I don't know, maybe, maybe it's doing one of those like, there was a noise. Poor Beta though, there's no filter, there's no heater, there's nothing. It looks like it's in direct sunlight, so it's probably going blind. Land in Mumbai, walk into the hotel restaurant for a quick meal. The hotel staff come by to leave this on my table as company, given I was eating alone. So nice and thoughtful and something that's never happened in all my travel thus far. Hashtag customer service. I guess people are really different, um, depending on what kind of knowledge and background they have. If you did this to any of the fish keepers in you know, the YouTube community that you know, are legit about things, they would be like, dude, that's, I don't want that. Can you put that back in the bigger tank that it came from? Hopefully it does have a bigger tank, okay? Like, that's not, I don't, that's not how you treat a fish. But for someone like Prakash, I don't blame you because you probably don't have the background knowledge, enough background knowledge to know. You've probably never gave a thought to a fish before, like how do fish live? What is the ammonia and nitrate cycle? So I don't blame you, but yeah, it's just funny. To him, this is a very good thing to do. And to all of the customer service in this hotel, this is a very good thing to do. I guess it's less obvious than, you know, treating someone badly, like treating a human badly. Like what if they took a kid who is locked up in a Tupperware container and put them on the table. Would Prakash have the same reaction? Or would this hotel, you know, would the staff of this hotel be in jail right now? Sold at an aquarium gift shop. I really like to know which aquarium this came from. Is it the same aquarium from the last, last FTR? I wouldn't be surprised. Looks like a zebra fish, maybe? What's that tube thing? Is that a straw? Can you drink out of this? What's going on here? I like how they had pink gravel and fake plants in there as well, like, 
just rub some salt on the wound. The only thing I do actually like about this is that little piece of root that kind of looks real. But honestly, how is a aquarium gonna do this? That's the worst thing you can do. I wonder how many fish die trying to make this and, and maintain selling this merchandise. Yeah, same. This is next level. I, I just can't imagine how ignorant someone has to be to put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, at least eight blood parasyclids in what looks like a bio orb. This is fish abuse to the highest order. There's like extreme oxygenation in this tank, like it matters. It's not oxygenation at that point, dude. There's a reason why some fish can't fit in smaller fish tanks. It's because there's not enough water to dissipate the poison that is their poop. These fish are big cichlids, they poop a lot. The poop becomes intoxicating and burns their gills. It's called ammonia burn. You don't have enough water to contain all of this bio load. No amount of beneficial bacteria can get rid of that much concentrated nitrogen. This is a minus one for humanity. This Instagram post is sent by Mr. Dino Cookie and he said that I really inspired him to make this change in his aquarium, Aquascape. So he started off with this not so natural looking, very artificial tank, and then it started to become more natural. He got rid of all that artificial junk and started off at the right step. It got much better after that. There's some attachments of Java Fern. And the last and final step is a massive amount of live plants in his now natural aquascaped fish tank. It's also very understocked in the fauna selection as well, which I really like. Very proud of you, Mr. Dino Cookie. I am very honored to have played a part, played a role in this evolution. Now forget about the fish tank and the rating for that. I just wanna rate this whole experience five out of five. Well, let's go. The next tank is sent in by Jessica Rose. Right off the bat, the Kaidrokado around the large stones caught my eye. Now this is a pretty big tank uh, considering the stocking options, so it's not overstocked at all, which I like. But there is use of artificial decoration and also Lucky Bamboo, which I am not a fan of either. However, this is definitely inspired by some sort of place in Japan. This is that uh, feudal shrine and then the bamboo forest illustrated by the lucky bamboo and then the hydrocado around the boulders do give it a nice shriney, <laughs> feudally feel to it. So I feel like I would see something like this occur in Japan, like just a temple. Or maybe it's China, I don't know. But anyways, I'm going to go beyond my 3 out of 5 typical artificial tank rating because this does seem pretty innovative to me and it actually does work. It's not just random pieces of artificial crap together. It's a temple with the Japanese or whatever image or symbol or kind of representation with the bamboo forest. So four out of five, long story short, good job, Jessica. The next tank is sent in by Jesus. Not, not Jesus Christ, Jesus Gutierrez. First thing that catches my eye is the brilliant colors. The second very thing that catches my eye is the Swasser Tang from the right to the left of the tank. Very nice plant, one of my favorites. And you got it in a beta aquarium. That's really nice. The hornwort is growing really nice, really lush. And you got baby tears in the front of the tank trying to carpet. You got some outer cones and either a outer leaf or almond leaf. The wood piece really matches. I think it's a backdrop in the back. I don't think those are real branches coming out, but it's pretty ingenious of you to uh, match it up with a similar looking uh, piece of wood. So definitely bonus points on those. This is a really nice tank. I really like the stones as well. They have nice texture and you have a nutrient rich substrate, brilliantly colored beta. Everything's working pretty well. This beta is super lucky. Now I'm just waiting for a full carpet of that baby tier. 4.8 out of five in the meantime. Very good job. The next tank is another evolution sort of a journey sent in by Kogra Hemora. This is before he discovered my channel. There's actually live plants already and that beautiful colored beta. So not bad at all. You got a dark colored substrate. I don't think that's nutrient rich substrate. It's probably just inert. That's probably why the plants aren't doing very well. But the next tank is this. This is pretty lush. You switched out the substrate totally to from inert to a nutrient rich substrate. More plants looking green, looking nice. The beta is gone, maybe, I think, but uh, hopefully it's okay somewhere. Anyways, I'm really happy after you discovered my channel that you decided to turn your fish tank more natural, going the definitely going the planted route. 
I just gotta say, very happy and honored to be part of that awesome decision for you. Now, as far as appearance goes, I definitely want the plants to look more lush, give it some more time. A nutrient rich substrate plus the light should give more and more plant growth. I also want a more prominent hardscape from you something that covers more vertically. For now, 4.3 out of 5. Still a really good job. Next tank is from Miss Pris 4699 Now this is a 20 gallon with one male beta and two female beta. Now this is a huge conversation of contention and you know, there's just a lot of things, issues. Um, before we get into all that, let's just rate the tank appearance wise. It looks like you put in a lot, a lot of work aquascaping this thing. Even though there is that terracotta pot, it still looks like it's in a good place. Like it doesn't look artificial at all because this is kind of reminiscent of a messy garden and that pot can probably be found in a messy garden just tumbled over like that. And there's so many species of plants. I can't wait for all the plants to fill out really well. Hopefully there are some root tabs and it's not just inert substrate. The tank does not look very overstocked and in fact it's probably understocked. So I'm giving the appearance, the aquascape, a 4.65. Really nice scape. I know it took a very long time. Now back to the issue with the bettas. Now if it really works for you, I'm glad that it worked. Um, that's great because not every betta has the same personality. Maybe that male betta just so happens to be able to coexist with other female bettas and maybe those two female bettas just so happens to be passive as well and can coexist with a male and each other. But from here I do see a tiny bit of a stress line on that betta so hopefully that's not the case. I still would never recommend putting a male and a female together in a 20 gallon. That's just like a big no-no for me. But that's all I'm gonna say. I'm not gonna judge further on than that. If it's working, very good job. If it's not, please take it out. There's really, it's really not necessary to have them in the same tank. You can turn this into a beautiful sorority tank or a centerpiece male beta tank. Next tank is sent in by Raina Taylor. This is a nice scape featuring some of the hardscape of the wood. I like the textures and I really like the floaters up top. I'm not sure what they are, but they look very lush and they're keeping the light levels down a notch so that, you know, it's probably controlling some nitrates and algae growth. The scape itself looking a little bit bare, um, even though there's some intricate branches going on, I would plant in between those branches and attach more Bucephalandra, Java Fern, or Anubias, all low lighting plants so they would do well and also fill out the back a little bit. I like the understocking of this tank, and so far I'm going to give it a 4.35. Very good job and keep it up. The next tank we have is sent in by Timon Wisman. I hope I pronounced all that right. If I didn't, I'm sorry. This is a lovely tank showcasing centerpiece fish and centerpiece plant. So centerpiece fish, the programmy, I think that's a programmy, and then centerpiece plant, or actually the plant I was drawn to first the tiger lotus, letting it grow high and also keeping a portion of it low. That's very nice. Lots of vibrant plants, lots of great textures here, and the aquascape fills out vertically, which is very important. Floaters up top, controlling some nitrates, algae growth, and look at that big healthy school of cardinal tetras. That's amazing. Five out of five, no questions asked. Let's go. All right, that is super cool. I'm not agreeing with, you know, putting a goldfish in there with n probably no filter, um, but I'm pretty sure this is not permanent. And I know the fish doesn't really enjoy this. I don't think there's any way a goldfish would be able to know what the heck is happening. It definitely does not have the intelligence to actually know that it's driving this vehicle. Now I've seen this video circulating a little bit. Um, I'm not gonna put the full video and I'm not gonna say whose video it is. Contrary to popular belief, this channel is not about getting other people flamed, okay? I don't endorse hate of any kind. Just because they might treat animals bad doesn't mean they're just 100% bad. We all do bad things. We've all done bad things and will do more bad things in the future. So who are we to judge? Having said that, I am here to judge this. That is not okay. That is way too small of a place to put like any fish and not to mention definitely not goldfish. Yet there's at least two in there. Looks like they're gulping for air trying to get out. Like if fish weren't known to have claustrophobia, they do now. They look claustrophobic AF. Don't worry, I'll put him in the bowl in a few days. So you got everything ready yet you're just gonna leave it in that cup. This is procrastination at its best. I wonder how well you study for tests before the exam. Why Why do you need to wait to put the fish in the bowl? Just, 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 just do it! Yesterday you said tomorrow. 
He said in the comments, he has been moved to a bigger bottle now. He has been moved to a bigger bottle now. And the picture is a wine glass. If anyone was to like listen in on this conversation, if it was a conversation someone had in real life, they wouldn't be like, they're talking about a fish tank. They're talking about a fish habitat. No one would think that they're talking about something they're putting a fish in. How can you put a fish in a wine glass and then transfer it into a bigger bottle? You mean Aquafina? Maybe Fiji water? Smart water? Okay, so here's the Playco that I own. Look how big he is. Big ass motherfucker. The title is This Asshole on TikTok Who Took His Fish Out of the Water. Yeah, it looked like that fish was out of the water for a while. I mean, you had to put him there, start up your camera, and then go back to it. How would you like it if someone just pushed you underwater and you won't know when they'll let go, but you know you can't breathe? Now, here are the people who might be like, hey, fish can breathe. Uh, they can breathe air. They have to breathe air. That's why we have filters and oxygenation, and that's why some fish go up to gulp air. Yeah. Fish breathe air, that's right, but only through their gills. Now when you take the fish out of the water, their gills become sticky. The best way to explain this is through this analogy. If you have a bowl of noodles in the water, you can switch the noodles around, no problem. You can even separate noodle from noodle. Now if you use chopsticks or you used a fork and you scoop it out of the water, the noodle suddenly sticks together. Now it's a little bit harder to take noodle from noodle and separate it. They become sticky, especially if you had instant noodles before, that sort of stickiness when you know you don't have enough water. That's what gills are like. They can only operate when they're in the water. They're all separate, they're all nice and flowy. Once you take them out of the water, they stick together. The more you know. Free sidewalk tank seen on FB Marketplace. Please take and not let the vegetation die away. Because the vegetation is the most important thing here. Look, there's a fish. Why did you drain 75% of the water? Anyway, we're not losing much. It looks like duckweed and java moth. Probably algae infested, snail infested crap. You have the decency to keep the fish tank until someone actually signs up to buy it. Doesn't particularly fit into the sub, but thought a lot of y'all would like this. Oh no, not epic. Hell yeah, extremely epic. Yeah, that, that pretty much describes it. Also, oh no, fish abuse. Hell yeah, better fish heaven. That's how I would probably describe it, I don't know. Hey, Mr. Grumpy Gills. When life gets you down, you know what you gotta do? I don't wanna know what you gotta do. Just keep swimming, just keep swimming, just keep swimming, swimming, swimming. What do we do? We swim, swim. Don't worry, no singing. How many unnecessary things was that? I can't, I lost count. Honestly, not that many. I'm just, I guess I can't count to four because I think there's around four necessary things that I just saw. You put the fish in a glass of like 0.25 gallons. You put it on the car and you drove it home. And then you used a spatula to scoop it out to what looks like a weird perverted candle fetish sort of thing. Are you really that bored, you nincompoop? I can't believe they still do this. Thankfully, I don't think they do this in carnivals in Canada. I've never seen it at my local, like, fair carnival sort of thing. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they do it in the States. That is horrible. I mean, if you even win one, do you just carry the thing around with you all night? Don't you want to have, like, food and other fluffy toys? Why do you want a fish bowl and a fish in it? You can go to the pet store for that. It's even more fun to go into a pet store and look at everything. This is unnecessary for both human and fish and doesn't benefit either. Pretty sure you're not making too much money off of this. Is that a spider web? Maybe I should do something about that resident spider of mine. It's like everywhere. I'm a little scared now. The first tank is sent in by Beta Buddies. This is quite a nice and simple scape and the understocking of the tank is very appreciated. There is some um, artificial gravel here and there, but not a big deal. And this is all for Castiel, the beta. Very nice drawing. I can tell that Castiel is a spoiled boy. A 4 out of 5 for the fish tank. Good job. The very next tank is sent in by Jamie Marshall. Jamie, you got a good tank going on here. It's pretty tall, but you've filled it out quite well. 
I really like the brick backdrop. It doesn't really make sense in a natural sort of way, but it's something to look at and it's not one of those super artificial uh, sort of backdrops, so that's appreciated. Looks like you got a short finned or perhaps it's a female betta. I'm not really sure up top. Not sure what that fish is. Very hard to tell. It is very understocked, so that's awesome. I'm pretty sure this can be low maintenance if it's not already low maintenance. It's got a lot of plants in here and not a lot of fish, so you're doing that very right. I like the skate. There looks to be a sort of substrate divide. I think the black substrate might be something like fluvostratum or a nutrient rich substrate. And then there's sand in the front where there's not much area for plants. And that's perfectly fine. That's a really nice sort of realistic approach as well because in nature, plants grow where there's nutrients. Now something's going on over there with the purple plants. I'm not sure what that is. Let me know in the comments. And right now I'm giving you a 4.1 out of 5. Some things you're gonna work on are introducing some hardscape that scape upwards so a few nice pieces of wood going up would be amazing attaching some java moss or some bucephalandra or anubius nana petite this next tank is sent in by jason tai from malaysia now i'm very conflicted here this looks like a perfect perfect tank except i think you already know what i'm gonna say i'm not a big fan of the gravel but just imagine if that gravel was like fluorite or maybe ADA aqua soil, something natural like that, even sand. Wow, that'd be amazing. The School of Neons is great. Programmy is amazing looking. It could even be called a species tank because the Programmy is the only fish in here that's not a neon. I do enjoy the gathering of the lava rocks over there. Adds some nice texture. Going with a 4.1 out of 5. Good job but also give that substrate a second thought. This tank is sent in by Jonathan Bayard. And of course, you guessed it, this is a progression. It started off looking like this, but then it got to this point. And finally, look at that. That is now a beautifully aquascape tank. Now there's probably still a lot of artificial ornaments, including some artificial plants in there, but there are also real live plants that I can see. And I also like how you just took out all of the platies and then restocked the tank with something more sensible. Although so I do like the look of all that red from the platies. I actually was not going to complain about that at all. And now I'm curious to see how they would look in this new tank of yours that looks great. I'm pretty sure the red from the platies would contrast very well with the green. Anyway, thanks for sending over this progression. It was really nice to see that. You still have some ways to go with the live plants and maybe getting a nice carpet. I'm not sure if that substrate is nutrient rich. And for now, you get a 4.2 out of 5. Good job. Now, next tank is sent in by Kyle Wild. I would love to have a last name called Wild. Instead, my last name is Wang. Wild Wang. Okay, that's that's weird. Actually, this is actually amazing. This is one of my favorite tanks so far. It just looks so cinematic. Like if you take a look at the Rasporas right now and take a look at the Cardinals, you kind of see this like depth of greater than what it actually is. And I think that's all thanks to how you scaped the primary feature of this tank, which is the hardscape wood. That's a beautiful wood piece. It's so well done um, how you attach the moss onto it. It creates this feeling that it's a grand sort of scene somewhere. And then you zoom out a little and you get this uh, nice carpet, nice vibrant plants. The stocking is very minimal. These species agree with each other. This is truly something else and I can't wait to see all the plants grow out. And I know there's a no fishing sign there but you know what i don't even care five out of five very good job kyle this tank is from lols haha <laughs> that's quite a name um hopefully you made it through high school okay without being made fun of too much so mr lols here or mrs lols you cut yourself a pretty nice scape though that's a wonderful scape the rocks all match each other you got plants scattered throughout it that's amazing it's creating a island effect which is a style of aquascaping that is very popularized nowadays and you've made it work your grass is seeding there's a lot of nutrients in this water um there's a buttload of guppies though I'm not sure how I feel about that. There's also a programmy sticking his tail out from the back. And there's some quarries and some miscellaneous tetras that I'm not sure of. 4.8 out of 5. Very good job. And our next tank is sent in by Mark Pagalanen. Now the first thing I noticed was that there was some sort of algae buildup or some debris buildup and it doesn't look great. But I'm just trying to imagine it without that buildup um, once it's cleaned. And 
My imagination is saying it looks pretty darn good. Now this is a plant species tank, which means there's only one species of plant, and that's Anubias, and I'm totally fine with that. I actually like doing that. And it's very pleasing to the eye how you set this tank up. Those angels are going to get bigger and bigger. Very simple stocking choice, which I love. You got the centerpiece angels and then some dither fish in the background. Really, you just got to clean it up and it should be A-OK -okay looking beautiful. And to me, honestly, that could just be a perfect amount of plants in there. You really don't need to stock more plants in this thing. It could just be that this place is a little bit barren, but there's some Anubius Nana growing here and there. Yeah, I really appreciate the scape, and I'm giving it a 4.7 out of 5. Good job, and keep it up. Hey, how's everyone doing? It's your boy Chris, back with another fish tank review. <laughs> it's not liking this. <laughs> that look at the end. <laughs> That great cat is just like, well, why, why you gotta mind my business, dude? What? I'm just trying to get at the fish, bro. I don't see your name on it. What's your problem? <laughs> I'm glad someone has the common sense to not put their pots into the fish tank. Darn it, Jerry. Parks and Rec fans will know. This tank is sent in by Beth Butterworth, one of my viewers. Look at that big Amazon sword looking super bushy and filling out almost half of the tank. I like the natural scape of the tank. The stocking options are also perfect because it does not look overstocked. Um, you got some angels, a garami in there. The plants are simple. The ballast is growing tall. You could have the ballast spread out a little more. I think it's gonna take some time. Maybe you're trying to do that anyway. So hopefully it does get there because filling back the tank and making the background more filled with plants is gonna make it look so much better. The driftwood pieces really stand out in the middle as well and a light substrate to make the tank brighter overall. I'm giving this tank four out of five, good job. All right, now we're at some kind of restaurant, it looks like, um, with a bed of fish in the bowl on the plate. Now tell me that's appetizing. Is that appetizing to people? That just looks disgusting. How am I supposed to eat now when there's like fish? You could get salmonella from, you know, live fish that are not cooked. I'm not saying go cook the betta. I'm saying why you gotta have a betta in the equation? It's a dinner. Gordon Ramsay would see this and be like, they've got a fish on my plate. <laughs> I don't know. Where's the lamb sauce? Where's the fish sauce? That looks like crab. What kind of sauce is that color? It looks like Pepto-Bismol. Anyway, I'm not here to judge the food, but I'm just saying live fish do not belong on the plate. Especially betta fish, which are primarily pet fish, not for eating. All right, here's a classic hashtag goldfish keepers, a <laughs> in a tank that is probably barely three gallons big. My lovelies are so happy with their new abode with some new members to their families jiggling all the way around exploring. Someone commented so soothing lovely cuties. Yeah it might look lovely to you but this is like one of those typical like oh it's so cute and then in the fish's perspective the ammonia is burning my gills I'm being cooked alive by poison but yeah, too bad fish don't have the ability to tell us that or express it in their face when they're sitting at the bottom or, you know, turned upside down and floating. It's already too late. Your lovely cuties are all gonna die. Yeah, you know, haven't done an FTR for quite some time. Thought I'd just throw in something from Wish. <laughs> Always keeping it classic, throwback. Look at this. You could easily put some like plant. You could start a sort of like small little terrarium in there without any critters, just some little moss or smaller plants. But no, you gotta put all that away and come up with putting a fish in there. It's probably like this small and it's got a little goldfish in there that's, you know, gonna live a fraction of a fraction of its lifetime. I wish that this didn't exist. I mean, the price tag is really, really tempting. It's $5. That makes everything worse because now parents can get it just on a whim. Like, what's $5? Just order it, whatever. Put a fish in it, whatever. Now this is interesting. This fish bowl in a sort of vine glass dates back to, I don't know when, but it's part of a old painting and it is, uh, featured in the museum. I'm not even gonna try to say the name of those things, but anyway, I'm sure they didn't know better um, than to keep them in such a small containment, but this just proves that in the old days, 
they probably had it even worse. Like the fish probably had even worse environments to live. So that's a lot of goldfish in a cup. PetSmart ain't got nothing on the old times in Vienna. I'm watching the orange fish. What you gonna do? I bet it's gonna jump out. <laughs> yup, <laughs> that was a quick one. And I'm, I always wonder like, why do fish just decide to jump out? Just like, oh, I'm swimming, 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 swimming. Okay, I'm jumping. <laughs> Try to live better, come on. You don't see me just like walking on the beach and be like, okay, I'm coming. This is one of my viewers called Ecliptic Tenebricosa. This is a before picture of before they started watching my channel. And then they sent in an after photo and that is night and day. That's beautiful. You swapped out the artificial gravel for such natural gravel. You even made a little slope and then you made one side of the tank plant heavy um, and decor heavy. I see Anubius, Nana, I think there's Anubius Barteri. There's some crypts in there, maybe a sword. Good job for improving and I'm glad I could help. You could always use more plants or balance the other side with a, another piece of driftwood and fill up the back and consider uh, filling up your fish tank. I know maybe there's no lid so you're afraid that the beta might jump out but then you can inhibit that by adding some frog bit. For now, four out of five for this tank. The next tank is sent in by Liz Nocha. Again, hope I'm saying that name right. Liz is from Germany and she's very active in our Discord. She's always posting a lot in the aquascaping section. She's like the lead aquascaper for our Discord channel is what I want to say. <laughs> this is a very unique scape. You have all these plants that are probably more typically planted and rooted into the substrate, yet she's left it floating. This is quite a cool technique to use because then all the roots are shooting down into the gravel and creating this forest really mysterious look kind of like a tree with you know dangling foliage that might be what she is going after and it's like fall time because the trees have color now and there's an understory to the tree this is quite beautiful the use of oco stone is also something that's you know nice touch to the aquascape more textures is always better 4.8 out of 5. this tank sent in by another viewer oliver manger really simple betta fish tank with live plants i love the anubias and i think that's the sword in the back the betta is a crown tail looking happy and very active i like the use of bigger stones in the bottom adds more texture to the substrate betta fish tank done right Four out of five, great job. On a craft video floating around Facebook. Cement ideas that are so cool. You have this beautiful array of, I don't know, aloe vera, succulents. That's great, it looks great. And then you, it's like eclipsed by blue sort of bowl with a little bit of white gravel in the bottom and then three baby goldfish. Who comes up with that? Why don't you just fill it up with more nice looking aloe vera and succulents? You know, succulents can look so great um, with like different sizes and textures and colors. You don't need to add fish in it. I can't believe this post got 210,000 reactions and the majority of the reactions are positive. Uh, 4.2k comments and 113,000 shares. That's crazy and also very off-putting because now everyone's seeing this bad thing to do for goldfish. Hey, we can't go back to an FTR without barf gravel from Barf Gravel Limited. We got what looks like maybe 50 gallon tank there, uh, two pretty much full grown Oscars, one Pleco. I guess that's not the worst we've seen on this series, but a dad who's trying to overcompensate, loves the big Oscars, oh, big, manly. The mom's like, we gotta give something to clean that tank with, let's throw in a Pleco. And then they're like, the kids get to make a choice too. What, what kind of uh, gravel do you want? Kids, oh, you want the one that looks like fruity pebbles? Okay, at least it's being sold with a filter. Yeah, that, I guess that's that's good. So goldfish, pleco, dory. I love the substrate as well. Just keep it coming. In aquarium at my best friend's house. Don't worry, I told him what he needed to be told about his atrocities against fish. <laughs> yeah, SpongeBob, let's abuse some fish fish tank review. Now I don't really know my saltwater material but I know it needs more than this and I'm pretty sure a single frogfish needs way bigger of a tank than just like five to ten gallons. Really does look like just five gallons. Where did this guy even get a frogfish? 
I don't think they're very common in the aquarium trade. A lot of this is screaming illegal to me. Let me know in the comments if I'm right or wrong. Do you guys know more about frogfish care? Sounds to me like this guy heard the frog in the name frogfish and was like, cool, I'm getting like a frog, but it's kind of like a fish. So I'm just gonna put them in this tank that I have lying around. And I hope he did make it saltwater because that's just going to kill the frogfish very quickly. Saltwater fish generally cannot live in freshwater. They're their bodies are totally different. Simply through osmotic pressure, this thing is going to die very soon if it's just left in fresh water. This is like a next level bad fish tank and just horrible negligence. You gotta do your research, dude. Talking about negligence and research. My art teacher is a great guy, but... If he keeps his fish in such a horrible display, how good of an art teacher can this guy actually be? This is a cricket or insect container or a transport container at best. Not a permanent home for a goldfish that can grow very long. Needs filtration, is pooping all the time, so is getting poisoned by its own poop in that little amount of water. And the barf gravel, and of course, the SpongeBob house. You know, I love SpongeBob, but this is ruining it for me. When you spend your whole budget on out of tank decorations, I mean, what is that even? It, it reminds me of like the Colossal Titan's abs. Is it like a slab of meat or something? What is happening here? Why do you need this? And then the tank itself looks just horrendous. I like how you need to put a thumb up beside it to be like, no, no, this is good. This is good. And then there's the red outline outlining like, this is the part with where the fish are <laughs> in my fish tank. This is where the fish should be. At any time if you're making or buying a fish tank and you need help identifying where the fish should be kept in that fish tank, either don't buy it or don't make it. It's a bad idea. This is from Cephalon IO, also called AO Rye on the Discord channel. This is a tank that he's always showing off in the Discord server everywhere. But no complaints because it's pretty darn beautiful and I look forward to seeing all the updates that he's got. It's a very, very impressive looking tank. Different kinds of mosses, different carpeting plants, the reds, the greens, the textures, the understocking. And he even drew up an image before actually doing the aquascape, which is always a very good idea. Cephalon Io getting my five out of five. Very good job. This is from Ashley C, a longtime subscriber. There's a nice variety of plants in here and there's also some almond leaves here and there. I like the thickness of the substrate, providing a lot of room for the Amazon sorts roots to grow. It's also pretty understocked, but I definitely would encourage you to get it more planted up, cover the back a little bit more. 4.1 out of five, keep it up. This 0.25 gallon that PetSmart sells is an all time low. You got that right. That's the first time I've seen a 0.25 gallon fish tank. Is it me or is it just getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller? What's next? Like not even a gallon? Are they gonna just drop the gallons? 200 millimeters of space. You put the 200 there so people are like, wow, that's a lot of space but then you, it's actually millimeters. That's basically what's happening here. If you notice a little dot in front of the two, it's a little dot, but the number 25, they made it pretty big. So the consumers would be like, whoa, 25, that's a big number. And even though they do know that it's 0.25, they see the big 25 and it's kind of like, this is probably big enough for a beta. It's all in the marketing. Good job, Top Fin. Good job killing more fish. Hope you're happy. Hope you can sleep well, yikes. Yeah, yeah. Betta fish arena. You know, when you start treating betta fish like Beyblades, let it rip. <laughs> let it flop. I don't know. Let it fight each other to the death. I don't even understand this. Like, why is that fish like levitating or floating? Is that like a dome? And then it can swim down, I guess? <laughs> actually, you know what? This might actually be bigger than the 0.25 gallon top fin. So, yikes, yes because of all this extra stuff that the fish wouldn't care about ever, but it's bigger probably than 0.25 gallons. Nice, just add water. It's like you buying one of those expandable toys where you add water and you can watch it grow over time, but it's actually a betta fish and betta fish are actual lives, not just a 
a toy that is an inanimate object. When you see the same quote, just add water, you know something's off. This is from Swish Splash. Now he emailed me and he said he's at 400 something subscribers, but he really wants to reach 1000. Let's all go help him out. In the meantime, this tank does look pretty artificial. However, it's really big and it's under stock. And I'm curious to see what you're gonna stock it with. And hopefully it will be under stock, it'll stay under stocked. And I understand that not everyone has the time to look after life plants. The color gravel, I can't do it. I can't do it, man. For me, you're getting a three out of five. Next tank is sent in by Bianca Felt. This tank looks nice and cozy for the one beta that's in there. Pretty good sized aquarium for a beta. Cause then once again, you don't want the tank to be too big because then the beta has a hard time finding food and hard time swimming around because of longer fins. So I would say this is a decent size for a beta. I like the rock placement and the plants that are planted in between the rocks. Kind of cover the bottom with Marimo moss ball, which isn't the best way to do it, but it's still, all right. I'm thinking that at the time of this picture was taken, the tank is not very old, probably relatively newly set up. Can't wait for the plants to grow in more and to establish into the tank and make the tank look more lush. I see that as probably a nutritious substrate, but you do have some plants that also can benefit from liquid fertilization, so make sure you're doing that. I recommend Seachem Flourish. Just one of your most basic liquid fertilizers. Four out of five. Good job and keep it up. My mom wonders why the bed won't swim or eat. Mom is 65 degrees in there. Yeah, 65 degrees Fahrenheit is quite cold for a betta, but the betta could potentially adapt. It depends on the individual betta. I guess some betta are like keener on surviving than others, but it is a really cold temperature for the betta and they can definitely just stop eating. They can't even digest the food anyway if they put it in their mouths. So yeah, this is why I always say that bettas do need a heater, except in the summertime if your summer is you know, warm. Like in Canada, I always have a heater around for the winter. It gets a little bit too cold for these guys. Golden Arowana, Black Diamond Stingray, and two blood parrots in a 150 gallon. <laughs> when I saw the stingray, it was just so funny. It looked like a freaking carpet in the <laughs> in this tank. It's basically one third or more of this tank. So that's what we're working with here. It's a beautiful stingray, what a shame. You know, stingray lives matter. If you have that kind of money to get a stingray and an arowana, why not just spend it on a bigger tank and make everything look good. People need to understand that just because they have some really cool looking fish, it's not gonna do much if they put it in their stupid looking tank. Spotted in a Facebook plant group. Well, that's one way to lower the pH. I'm hoping those are not real citrus fruits in there. <laughs> what kind of Facebook plant group is this? Who would post this into any group? How did this person even like get here? Like physically putting these, I don't know, hopefully they're artificial, but even if they are artificial, why would you put those artificial slices in there and put that weird frog looking thing and then put a goldfish in what looks to be a mason jar? What has to come over you to do that? Is it a culmination of their life choices or the way they lived until now? I'm always just so confused. Like, do you think that looks good? Do you honestly think that he did a good thing <laughs> for anyone? And then to take a picture and post it in a Facebook group. I'll stop, I'll stop. I'm being too savage. <laughs> okay, let's just, this is a good place to stop. You already know what I'm gonna say about this with the water depth and getting it ready to be sold, but there's still fish in it sort of thing and it's called fish artificial. You already know. <laughs> Zero out of two billion. Starting in hot, that's one of them bio orbs. That's not making me like bio orbs any more than I already do. Sorry, Oase. I'm amazed at how healthy they look. I'm pretty amazed too, but either they just got put in there or they're not really showing their stress levels. That's why ammonia poisoning is so dangerous because you never really know if they're getting poisoned by ammonia until it's too late. And not only is there one giant goldfish in that little bio orb, there's two. And the cherry on top, that fake little plant in the bottom. I love it. Five out of five. Wait, for real? Five, five out of five? Yeah, why not? Just, just end me right now. I don't care anymore. Ah, here's a tank. This tank is sent in by Chris Hurst, all the way from Australia. Big fan from Australia. That's pretty awesome. I have Aussies as fans. Good eye, mate. Very understocked. I like the gravel. Not my first go-to color of gravel, but it does kind of look natural and it's unanimous. 
It's a pretty clean look. You now, if you're gonna select a color like that, you're gonna have to own it, and this guy owns it. Unapologetic about that decision. He's got a powerful centerpiece wood, and it's pretty well planted. It could be a little more uh, dense. Stocking is very low, very enjoyable tank. Those powerful lights up top and the clean tank itself. You made some really good choices, dude. 4.5 out of 5. Good job. Sing it from the mountaintop, sis. Where most people keep their bettas versus how you should keep your betta. At the very bare minimum. Yeah, pretty much. Good job. Great for Garami, huh? I don't think so. <laughs> Something's wrong with this world when I'm impressed that it says 1.6 gallons. You don't, you don't see that every day anymore. Something that big being sold by Equion or Top Fin. Great for small tropical fish. They're moving the bar lower and lower, so now 1.6 gallon is normal for guppies and garamis, while 0.25 gallons are normal for bettas. Da, 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 da. It's a water gun. I'm just thirsty. And it comes with a filter, which is better than nothing. It comes with three little LED lights, pretty standard. But no, don't let any of this fool you. Don't get this tank. And if you get this tank, I don't know, put some shrimp in it maybe? Grow some planaria? <laughs> don't put a freaking fish in it. It's 1.6 gallons, guys. Tried to educate him many times, but he clearly doesn't care about the fish or its happiness. First of all, that fish doesn't look happy, for sure. So let's see what this guy has to say. To everyone who told me the fish wouldn't last because I wasn't spending my whole savings to give him a wonderful life, you don't have to even come close to using up your whole life savings to make a good enough fish tank for a beta, okay? Unless, you know, maybe you're not like working yet, maybe you're still depending on allowance if you have allowance, and that I'm a terrible pet owner for not doing so. Happily had him for over a year now. Do I have to... Do I have to explain how wrong he is about this assessment of his fish? No. The answer is I don't have to explain it. Y'all are smart people. Oh, I scrolled down and saw a comment. On a side note, this same person took a wild bunny from outside and put a Doritos bag in the cage as a hide. So... Can you imagine how ratchet that looks? Just takes a wild bunny, chucks it in a cage, and then puts like a Dorito bag that he just finished eating into the cage. <laughs> that looks so ratchet, oh gosh. Raquel Navarro sent in this wonderful fish tank. Here, Ooh, what am I looking at here? The hardscape is something to fall in love with. Super clean, oh you got the attachments on there too, and you got some floaters up top, and it's all planted and nice, and there's an open area, and these are home to two puffers. Very nice choices made here. I love the clean look of the tank. I love the light. And I love where you put it. There's like a little old fashioned teapot over there. There's like a little plant and the back of the wall is like this rustic look. Five out of five, my dude. Wow, that whole setup, what a steal. That I would set up only $10.99, wow. That's worth like negative $10.99. I'm sorry, but if you buy that for $10.99, you're an idiot. Poor bettas at local PetSmart. Rest of animals well taken care of. Shame fish often are neglected. Betta Lounge. Yeah, when I used to work at PetSmart, um, this, never seen this before. Just because you make the display look prettier doesn't change the fact that they're in way too small of a container. I think the PetSmart I worked at actually had bigger containers than that. And by the way, if you guys are interested or want to see a video of me covering the truth about PetSmart, that's a pretty clickbaity title right there, make sure to hit me up in the comment sections telling me you want to see that because I don't work for them anymore. I can be very honest and you guys know that I'm pretty much like honesty right here. <laughs> what this whole series is made out of, so. Found on Instagram. Doesn't say what kind of fish that lives in it. Well, you know why. It's not a fish, it's an elephant. There's no room to even swim, it really even isn't. I really appreciate the scape and the aesthetics, but you might as well could have just put a mono shrimp, maybe some cherry shrimp to brighten it up with some reds. Not a betta, it's not even a female betta, it's a, it's a full-size male betta. This tank sent in by Will Schaefer, 
black water biotope done very right. There's branches everywhere, wood, leaves floating on top and on the bottom, the color's just right. And my favorite part of this, besides it being understocked, is that there's green leaves and shoots coming out from the debris that is more brown. And this is very natural and this is what you would find in nature. Maybe not the java fern or the species of the plants, but there's, there'll be some green coming out of the, you know, fallen foliage. It might be a bit of a pain to um, maintain every week, but kudos to you, dude. 4.8 out of 5. Keep it up. This aquarium I found in a pharmacy. If that's the first thing I saw when I entered a pharmacy, I'm heading right out. Something tells me Mary won't be at work for very long. Mary likes her new home here at work. Man, how dare you. How dare you put a fish called Mary, which is the namesake of Jesus' mom, into something like that. Take them out. Lord, forgive them for they do not know what they're doing. Zane sent in this 12 gallon plant tank with six neon tetras. Very good start, Zane. I see that you have a lot of plant species in there, trying out a lot of new things, and your Ludwigia is growing real fast and through the water, up, immersed. I got a few tips for you. Maybe your substrate can be a little thicker so that the roots, especially with that little Amazon sword that's gonna grow taller and bigger, maybe help that, help the root system expand a little more if you add more substrate and then also add in some more hardscape, whether that be wood or rocks, that might make it look even better and fuller. But really good job, really good start. Four out of five, keep it up. This Amazon review of a 6.8 liter tank. Oh dude, this is the real review. I got nothing on this fish tank review. Dimitrita has given it five, count them, five stars. Verified purchase, love the style. Really love the tank, super easy to assemble, <laughs> whatever that means. <laughs> it's not like some Gundam Lego thing. And very stylish look, <laughs> I guess, if that's what you're looking for. My fish is Sam's happy. Seven people found this helpful. Well, okay, maybe they found it helpful so that they can avoid getting this thing all together. It would be pretty aesthetically pleasing if you aquascape that full green, some anubia, some colors and textures, and then a little bit of shrimp in there, maybe a few snails, leave it at that. Hey guys, so you know how my audio quality isn't the best, even though I do have a mic and I've had a mic for a year now, maybe more. Turns out I just realized the other day that I forgot to check or select the external mic recording option. So this whole time, every video, this mic was not even being used. Um, I just had to take a moment when I realized that. I just had to like take a break from just recording anything. This was truly the real galaxy brain right here. <laughs> Five head. I'm gonna take that L right now. Anyways, my name is Chris, you're watching Fish for Thought, and welcome back to another Fish Tank review. According to the comments, it seems like you have been missing Rapashi for the past few videos. Don't worry, there will be videos coming out with her, or at least about her. Come here, Rapashi. Say hi, everyone missed you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I like how there's a fake plant in there just to rub salt on the wound. I don't understand. <laughs> Even showed the part where the fish flopped out into the sink and almost went into the drain. Do you have no shame? You're just showing the world this is supposed to be funny. This is supposed to make people like you. At yo dumb ass berry. Sounds about right. Poof. That's a rough start. Well, ooh, okay. So this tank is sent in by Adela. Del Rivero Jimenez. 
I didn't say that right, and I'm sorry. First thing I notice is that powerful sponge filter. Nice, good choice. In the email that was sent in with this picture, she was describing that it was a wild tank, supposed to look more wild, look less, you know, organized. And I think if that's the theme you're going for, you did a really good job. The floating vegetation up top really helps that natural wild look untamed. And there's some varieties of plants with different textures that really give that wild look as well. I think this has got shrimp and snails in it and that's pretty much it, so very understocked. You can probably put some live berries in here no problem, but the hydrocado is a really nice touch. I love it. This is my kind of tank. Perhaps a little bit of more hardscape and maybe if you can cover up that sponge filter a little bit, let the plants grow out a little bit more. I see you've trimmed down the vallis, but to letting it uh, flourish and grow up to the surface might also look good. So for now, 4.3 out of five, good job. All right, so here is an interesting website that I found, um, Aquascape Addiction. They wrote an article about the best fish for one gallon tank, colon, top five. I don't think there are five fish in this world that could be good for a one gallon. This was written by Craig, so you know it's legit. Now, when you hear Aquascape Addiction, you kind of hear like, ooh, this is kind of cool. And their little description of themselves goes something like this. We're those people that obsess about trimming the carpet on a routine schedule. A clean, pristine tank is what makes us tick. So you're automatically thinking like, okay, green aqua, ADA, Fluvo, Amano, Aquascape, ADA, Aquascaping. And then you scroll down a bit and then you see the list of the fish, which are Betta in number one, number two, Guppy, number three, White Cloud Mountain Minnow, number four, Tetra Fish, whatever the heck that means, and number five, Goldfish. And here is what the Goldfish section is, because I don't have time to read all of this, man. Okay, number five, goldfish. Okay, so we don't like the idea of having a goldfish in a bowl like many people have at home, but having them in a one gallon tank is just fine. Most people have bowls that are little over 0.5 gallons in size, so a full gallon will do one goldfish just fine. I don't wanna read the rest of this crap. Yeah, that looks like enough space. <laughs> hey man, don't take my sarcasm like away from me. Don't do my job, bro along with a barf gravel. This is a 10 gallon with like a full grown. I think that's an Oscar, probably. Filter doesn't look any spectacular. They've just given up. You know like that pet that you got like 10 years ago that you never really wanted, but it's a pet and you feel the obligation to let it live. That's what they're feeling now, I guess. I don't even know how often this fish gets fed anymore, dude. The water line's down. The water's just being let evaporated. No effort here, no care. They're in an effing vase. Yeah, even the cat's like, whoa, y'all have it pretty ratchet in there, bro. I feel sorry for y'all. This tank is sent in by Ellison Lamont. Pretty darn crazy looking, black water inspired sort of aquascape tank. You got that highlight of green mosses growing on that hardscape, really nice. I think the branches that are kind of twiggy and all over the place gives it a supernatural black water look. I'm digging the sand, I'm digging all the fallen foliage, and I especially dig the stocking options. It's not overstocked at all, especially looking at the size of the tank and the tiger barbs. The colors and textures of the tiger barbs really pull this whole aquascape together. It just looks very natural altogether. 4.8 out of 5, really good job, Ellison. This is where my classmate keeps her turtle. Oh. Is your classmate in China? This is how they keep turtles in China most of the time. And I say China, but also like a lot of other Asian places too. It's cause I've been to China a lot and I know this is how they keep all their turtles. They don't live very long. If the turtle girl finds this picture, she's gonna have a field day with this guy. Nine. Again, <laughs> doing my job for me. <laughs> you know how I like to count how many goldfish are in a crappy small little tank. Let me see if you're right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes, our math matches up. Good job us, high five. Stackable 0.2 gallon light aquariums go for $1 on AliExpress. Over 100 orders, oh my goodness. Creative placement, you mean creative way to kill animals? That's the only creative thing about this. Oh, there's all sorts of fish in there. There's like dither fish, bettas, guppies, whatever the hell else. Throw in some saltwater fish. Why stop here, right? <laughs> Mini shape. This decorative fish tank looks exquisite. I'm gonna throw a 0.1 gallon tank with two fish. Goldfish, not too keen on the species. So, perfect example. This person doesn't even know what a goldfish is. And 
they posted this in our Xinyi aquariums. So there's absolutely no excuse for anyone else. But actually that, you know that Aquascape addiction crap of a website, that stupid article that we read, uh, I mean, this is too small for even that. <laughs> Because they're saying the goldfish should be in a one gallon. This is in like a 0.1 gallon. That's that's even bad in terms of aquascape addiction standards. Joel Aboim sent in this beauty of a tank. Now I have a weakness for these long tanks, okay? I really want a long tank of my own. I've been looking for a long time. <laughs> but I haven't found a, an affordable and small enough one. But this is great, just letting that grass grow the whole lawn. And picking a side is nice too. He's picked the right side, right side for us, maybe left side for him or something like that. The leading lines are great with the hardscape and the plants shooting out from the right side only. Very nutritious looking substrate. Not sure what that Java fern's doing over there. Maybe he's trying to grow it out. Light looks clean, tank shape, and the glass look very clean. Filtration system is pretty much hidden. You can add some aquaponics to that filtration system. I think this is a shrimp and snail tank only, so not even any fish. Very good job, five out of five. This one is sent in by Savage Goldie. It's a small little tank. I like the substrate and I like how you divided everything into one little central island. You got a variety of plants there and it looks very neat and just categorized. I can't wait for all those plants to grow taller and thicker. Hopefully the root system will have enough room in this small-ish tank. On top are floater plants. The floater plants don't look too healthy right now. They might be the red, uh, what's it called? Red, uh, the more difficult floater plant to keep. But hopefully with that light and give it some time, they'll start becoming more healthy. Curious to see what your plant is stock in here. Um, hopefully nothing too much. For now, giving you a 4.5, really good job. Oh, you guys are racking in some high points today. What in the literal F? I like how this guy, I can just imagine how he's like walking around PetSmart and he's like double taking on this small ass little tank, if you can call it a tank, takes it and like, you serious? What in the literal F? Like I would have done the same. Good on you, brother. That's a good reaction to this kind of stuff. Sometimes that reaction just helps because it jerks other people to be like, oh yeah, dude, this sucks. And we need a lot more of disapproving attitudes towards these small tanks. In a way, we gotta shame other people for buying this tank just to stop people from purchasing it. There's nothing wrong with shaming people who abuse animals, okay? You can quote me on that one. Throw back to when my fish that lived for three years died and I didn't have a picture with it, so I made my mom take one. So you made your mom take one when it already died because you never took a picture when it was alive. I get it. <laughs> the face is just trying to smile, but I mean, she's crying because her fish died. I hope it didn't live the whole life in that little thing. Now people wouldn't think three years is a long time for a goldfish, but for a smaller child like this one, three years is kind of significant and this goldfish definitely lived longer than a lot of other ones would have. I think she probably tried her best to take care of it despite her lack of knowledge and she really does seem like she cared for it. She's trying her hardest to smile but she can't even do that because her pet just passed away. Three years, not a bad time for a kid. I'm not approving of this, but there's worse things out there. Like this piece of crap. A terrible aquarium and making fun of another fish's death. Okay, so the reply is she wants to eat him, LOL. And I think that's the original poster. Uh, she learned her lesson after eating Fernando. And I'm guessing Fernando was another Betta that she just managed to eat because that cat's like, I want to eat this one too, but I can't reach him. Or maybe the cat really did learn the lesson. Maybe she had indigestion the other time. And then the friend reacted with this smiley face. Ha 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 ha. Bad fish. Time out. Looks like an Akara or, or some kind of cichlid. Oh my goodness. A timeout for a fish, my dude? So let me get this straight. This cichlid was probably being aggressive to other fish. And then the human perspective was like, wow, this cichlid's being difficult, um, giving other fish bullying and not really just being respectful. So I'm gonna chase it with my net and stress it the heck out and then take it out of the water and put it in a plastic bag that's labeled timeout and it'll learn its lesson. No, 
First of all, when your fish is acting aggressive, that's your fault. The fish never asked to be put in such a tank. The fish never asked for any of its tank mates. You made those decisions. So if your fish are not getting along, you're doing something wrong. Time out for you, my dude. Secondly, punishing a fish will never work because they will never equate being in a plastic bag to, oh, it's because I did this thing. No matter how many times you do it, nope, doesn't work. You put them back into the tank, wait a few minutes, and it'll be back chasing the other smaller fish being more aggressive. Um, this is similar. It's in a plastic bag of sorts, but this is just bewildering. What the hell happened here? Anytime you have condom and fish together, you know it's not supposed to be together ever. I'm sure even the haters of this channel, some people who watch are like, fish abuse? That's not abuse, we eat fish. Like those kind of people, I'm sure they kind of feel bad for that fish trapped in a condom. If you don't, I'm, I worry about your humanity, buddy. That's so sad, just imagine what the fish had to go through. I guess whoever bought this condom never got to use it, so they got bored and started looking for creative ways. Don't take your sexual frustrations out on a fish, my dude. This fish tank sent in by my girlfriend, so you know, the, the wait list is here. My girlfriend sent it in here. It just gets fast tracked, you know, cause when, that's how it works. You want your FTR submission to bypass the whole wait list? Just be my girlfriend. That's it's easy. Hey, it might not be a bad way to get a girlfriend. Condom guy, take notes. So obviously this is a super bad tank from TikTok. Some of the comments said um, if it was just for a photo shoot and then the fish got taken out of there later, that's totally fine. I kind of agree with that, although it's still stressful, unnecessarily stressful on the fish. But I also doubt that there's another tank. I think this is the main tank. Such a beautiful, gorgeous color on that fish. Too bad it's in this small, tiny, like 0.2 gallon bowl, maybe not even that. Yep, I'll give it the aesthetics. It looks great, but from a fish keeping perspective where the health of the fish is always the utmost importance, this is garbage. My aquaponics class made personal aquaponics systems. When I found out fish were going in it, I didn't really think much of it until I saw how my little goldfish could barely move. I'm planning on getting a five gallon tank and a small filter. That's all I can afford. This was an upgrade to him. Really good on you for realizing that. I'm sure a lot of your classmates did not care or realize that the goldfish had such a little room and that it could be problematic. You're planning to make the move where it's gonna be a five gallon tank and with a small filter. Respect, I mean, that's all you can afford for that time. This fish was kind of forced on you, so a lot of people do way less for their goldfish once they realize they need a bigger tank. Found on Marketplace, three goldfish and one betta in a 26 gallon. Now, this tank would be perfect, and it was said in the comments as well, if there were no goldfish in it, and just the betta. And maybe even add in some community fish. It's a pretty good sized tank for a betta community. Just had to ruin it with adding goldfish in it. Now look how dirty it is. Also, maybe add some live plants. This tank is sent in by at Joan underscore ice cream. This is a 10 gallon divided tank um, with one betta. His name is Sanji from the One Piece anime series. I never really got into One Piece, but some of my friends think it's good. So I personally just like Naruto bleach. And in the email, I think she said she is getting or trying to find another uh, male betta for the tank mate a blue, sort of blue-white male beta. I like how both sides are almost identical to each other. Live plants, Anubius Nana, I see that. You're sticking with the easy beginner plants. I love that. There's even some floaters on top. 10 gallons, so both bettas will get five gallons each. Nothing wrong with that at all. Kudos to you for doing it right. 4.3 out of five. This next tank is sent in by Acri Nomi. Hopefully I'm saying that right. Kind of a blurry picture, but I can really see basically everything here. I really do like the centerpiece hardscape. The rocks and the wood have really unique features and textures. I love the little arch on the wood there, and then you added a java fern to it. That's perfect. There's some Anubias sticking with beginner plants. Again, good idea. Substrate looks clean. The backdrop looks great. It adds more live plant features to this tank, but without real live plants. But at least it's a natural backdrop, not like some like oceanic backdrop as you see so often. I'm a little concerned with how many bubbles there are floating around and but my concern there is because you have that betta, you don't want water flow to be too harsh. Bettas do not like swimming against currents, trying to keep themselves in one place. It really tires them out. So make sure that is something to avoid. 4.6 out of five, good job. This goldfish has been in this aquarium for two years. She won it from a fair. It makes me feel so sad because it's my cousin's cry. Oh. <laughs> 
Okay, it doesn't matter if it's your cousin's. That looks like a hagfish lived in it for like a year. This goldfish's slime coat has merged with the water surrounding it. How do you not change that? One water change a week. It's not a big bowl. You can manage one water change a week. It would not look like that. Pinterest strikes again. Well, all right, what do we have here? I guess we're making some mason jar sort of fish tank. It's a very, very small fish tank. As you can see, the hand barely fits into it. So the first step is to add a heater. I wouldn't say that's the first step in any fish tank. Pour in sand, level it out, add air tube, add rocks, pour water, more aqua, place corals. I'm hoping they mean just decorative, not live coral. Add fishies. Now what the heck kind of species of fish can you put in that? Damn it, Pinterest, get out of here. I can only imagine how stressed those poor things are. So this is a divider tank for bettas, just like the at Joan underscore ice cream person who sent in their divided tank, but the difference is very dramatic. This tank looks like it's maybe 2.5 gallons, so both of those fish aren't getting much. Secondly, no live plants. Thirdly, I don't know if there's a filter in there. Their water looks murky, so it's telling me that it hasn't been properly cycled or no water changes have been done in a long time. Both gravel colors are inducing the barf mechanism in my body. There's the obligatory SpongeBob house for all crappy fish tanks. I like how they're just opposing it with the crappy temple decoration. That's sort of obligatory for all crappy fish tanks. Not as common as the SpongeBob house with two bettas living in it when this whole thing might not even be enough for one. Way too overstocked. There are 20 parrot cichlids in this tank, two angels, four black holes, and the big white fish is about 14 inches long. Whew. Okay, giant garami, 20 parrot cichlids. Count them, 20. Actually, I'm not gonna count them. I can't count that high. Not in blood parrot cichlids. You know how good this would look with a nano fish ecosystem in this big tank? You can have brilliant schools of rummy nose, brilliant schools of cardinal tetras, uh, ember tetras. You can even do a nice discus planted tank. Whew. But instead, this crap. This is what we're left with. This tank is sent in by Yard. Yard is a aquascaper on our Discord channel. What's up Yard, thanks for sending in this tank. Lovely better you have. I like the uh, branches coming out from side to side. Kind of going for a black water feel, sort of, not really. Big sword in the corner. Now Yard, come on man, keep a cleaner tank. You got some brown algae issues going on in this tank. Time for a little scrubby scrub. But the beta looks healthy, looks happy. Nutritious and natural looking substrate. 4.3 out of 5. And this tank is sent in by James from Australia. Good day, mate. Seven gallons for his beta. Clean tank, nice dark substrate. Uh, one life plant, which is the Anubius, attached onto the driftwood. And the other plants are silk, but they are kind of reflective of Natural plants, that middle big one looks like an Amazon sword or maybe some java fern. Um, and the other one, the smaller one, looks like a small Amazon sword. The scape is really neat. It's very contained, not wild, not overgrown at all. And if that's the style looking for, that's totally fine. The background is not distracting. Everything is a black sort of contemporary background. Doesn't look like there's a filter in here, but that's okay. The beta would like without a filter and you do have to live Anubias in it. And it does seem like you're keeping a clean tank. Very good job, James, for doing it right with a beta. For of five keep it up this tank is sent in by jerry rodas now this is like the complete opposite of the tank that james sent in because this is wild uncontained there's a sponge filter shooting up bubbles or i think that might be an airline air tube might be an air tube so many live plants it's great it's got that tiger lily potted whatever works for you dude community tank i'm um, a little bit overstocked might be for my taste um, there's a beta in there as well hopefully it's able to get food good enough because there are a lot of faster fish that can get to the food before the betta can. So make sure you're spot feeding the betta. I do love a wild, uncontained look. Everything is live here, all live plants. Not much aquascaping going on as the plants are just, you know, everywhere. Life bearers everywhere, but still enjoyable to look at. 4.3 out of 5. Good job. This giant gourmet doesn't look so happy. Ugh. Giant gourmet 14 inches, 30 gallon tank, and penguin power filter. Dang, dude. Penguin power. This filter harnesses the power of penguins. 200 bucks. All right, all right. Really good price. 
really can't beat that price. 200 bucks for a giant gourmet. Okay, count me in, dude, count me in. 14 inches, that's pretty long. Definitely cannot fit into condom fish guy's condom. No, fish tank review. Oh. Oh, TikTok. Okay, okay. Let's let's watch that back. So, when you think a fish is dead, is really a suicide mission. Okay. So first of all, anyway. Okay, first of all, oh, that fish looked a little too active. Usually, when a f when you think a fish is dead and you scoop it out and you put it in the toilet, it shouldn't be swimming upright and that fast it should be like kind of sideways or belly up or maybe at best gasping for air either this person is an actual airhead dumbass or and i'm i'm gonna say it i'm gonna be honest i think this person did this on purpose just for tiktok when you thought tiktok couldn't get any worse we out here flushing live fish down the toilet. But I mean, the fish will probably have a better chance surviving the sewers than being handled by this person, let's be honest. Advertised as perfect for a beta fish. So not perfect for the alpha fish. Nope, only for the beta fish. So this is why you shouldn't be a beta fish because you might get put into this crap. Always assert your dominance, betas, because this is what happens if you're a beta. Some of the tiniest beta tanks ever Local selling these and ancient expired food slash meds from old pet store closed down in 2014. Yeah, pet cetera. I used to have a pet cetera around me. Always go there when I was a kid, checking out all the fish and getting all excited, not knowing any better. They closed down a very long time ago. This is very throwback. Huge, huge, huge collection of new and pricey aquarium tank supplies and decor. Honestly, hundreds of dollars worth of new items. I can't be the only person who finds that design very old. That's like boomer generation design. To call that new, I guess maybe if it wasn't opened, but what I'm assuming is that this person is like, either knows the CEO of Petcetera or is like the CEO's son who, uh, very clearly has a lot of unsold merchandise to get off the shelves still. Nobody's gonna pay 50 bucks, maybe for all of them, to start like a vintage collection and just put shrimps in it. 50 bucks for all of them, maybe. This fish tank sent in by Andrew Hamilton. Hi Andrew, I can see you through the glass, nice reflection. Pretty simple tank here, very understocked. Got some live plants, you're attaching some moss onto some surfaces, that's pretty cool. You got the two colored gravel and both of them don't really look like they're nutrient rich. So I'm not really sure what's happening there, but hopefully you are fertilizing the tank. I'm curious to see if you're leaving your stocking uh, amount to this little or if you have other fish planned in the future or maybe invertebrates let me know if you can um, i think this is a early start to the tank and i can't wait to see the plants fill in a bit more you get a solid four out of five for now good job this tank is sent in by fish life 111 it's kind of a unique tank i'm not sure if that plant over there is live or plastic i'm leaning towards plastic but what's really stunning and catching my eyes is centerpiece wood it's it's a stunner for sure. I mean, a lot of pro aquarium aquascapers would definitely put that piece to use. And you can too. Um, I think plant around it, um, add matching hardscape wood and rocks. I'm not sure if the oco stone is doing justice for that wood. I mean, with a piece like that, you really want to just focus on it and not take away attention from it. From what I can see from here, uh, pretty good stocking options, uh, but also what's up with the pictures in the back? There's like this funny looking dude with the funny eyes. There's some writing. I mean, yeah, you're not taking uh, your fish tank too seriously like some people might, and that's good. I mean, a hobby is a hobby. Do whatever you want with it, right? As long as there's no fish being abused. I like the little fun, quirky stuff going on here. Um, even though there's some artificial stuff, I'm really being won over by that. That gorgeous piece of wood. 4.1 out of 5. Keep it up. What wonderful decorations. Truly a fantastic tank. All right, listen here, you. What did I say about taking my job from me? <laughs> You're taking all the sarcasm away from me. Hey, when life gives you lemons, you put them in your fishbowl. I mean, the Instagram name is 
Lemons in strange places. You know what else is in a strange place? That fish. It's a strange place for a fish, don't you think? A little bowl. Next fish tank sent in by Franco. All right, right off the bat, everything is artificial, no doubt about that. But like I always say, not everyone has time for live plants. Not everyone even like live plants. Maybe they prefer fake plants or the look to fake plants. As long as you keep a clean and healthy tank, keep it proper. And this is kind of what Franco is doing. He's definitely keeping a cleaner tank than a lot of people, even with live plants. So this tank is getting a lot of water changes, really good filtration. I can tell there's some sort of balance here. The stocking options are, I don't know, um, I'm on the edge a little bit there. There's a fire mouth, some blood parrots, other cichlids. From what he said in the email, no aggression uh, problems at all. And I'm gonna take your word for it. They also don't look like they're too stressed at all. But I'm guessing these cichlids are not maxed out. Um, it is a big tank. However, be careful as cichlids grow up in size, they will change their personalities and attitudes towards one another. And of course, swearing on my oath for not going over three out of five for purely artificial tanks, that is what you will be getting three out of five. Doesn't mean it's a bad tank, it's simply the score I'm giving it. A lot of people would be very impressed to see this tank in someone's house. Next tank is sent in by Matthew. Although not strictly a fish tank, although there is a little goby over there that I missed. Wow, I just seen that for the first time. That is super cool and it has definitely increased your uh, rating. And this is only when I'm assuming that the turtle and the fish get along, that the turtle is not trying to eat the fish all the time or stress it. I really enjoy this tank. It's quite aesthetic for a turtle tank. The turtle definitely looks comfortable in this. He's got a really nice basking spot. He's got a lot of room to swim. And there's that fish and there's some live plants. Even though you have a turtle, you're still trying to do live plants. Really proud of you, dude. And hey, keeping a turtle is no easy matter. You're doing this properly, good on you. 4.5 out of five. Best restaurant. Oh boy, I don't understand. If you were eating at a restaurant, would you be able to eat with that thing behind you or beside your dining hair table? I would lose all of my appetite real quick. That is gross. And I'm sure it doesn't smell good at all. What are, what are the owners thinking putting this here? And then filling it up with like not even half of the tank with water. That filter might not even be able to suck up the water. It's like just at the tip of the intake, which if you know filters, that ain't enough to intake. The goldfish are big and they need way more water than that. Water is cloudy, probably a broken cycle. Holy cow, man. Don't eat at this restaurant. This gorgeous tank is sent in by Montana Aquarists. I love it. It's not the conventional scape. It's definitely reminiscent of something more natural that you can find in the wild just from, you know, a hiking expedition or some exploring around your local lakes. Really, really cool. The stones are super natural looking. The placement of the branches are very thought out and also very natural. Plants are not overbearing. I wouldn't even say that it's lacking any more plants because that could uh, mimic nature that nature's not always just lush with plants. There's some more barren areas than others. A little bit of a yellow hue kind of reminiscent of black water biotope. I can see some black neons. I can see some guppies pretty understocked here. Very nice long shaped tank. I think there's like double filtration going on. Pretty cool. This is getting my five out of five. I see nothing wrong with it and I'm super on board. Good job. Found on offer up those poor fish. Hey, we're back with the Mountain Dew baby. I got thirsty. $60. Fish tank must go. Yes, I agree. This fish tank needs to go, dude. Start over. But like, don't try to sell this to other people. This is crap. My friend's betta tank, which was so dirty that she didn't even know that her poor fish was dead for a while. That's dirty. That's gross. Poor fish. If that was the fish's name, Superman, how do you not expect that fish not to die? It's swimming in kryptonite. You put Superman in a swimming pool of kryptonite water? He's a goner, dude. He won't even be able to tread water. He won't be able to swim. He'll just suffocate. Did I say suffocate? I meant drown. That's what it's called when you suffocate underwater. Drown, Chris. Drown. Even Superman wouldn't be able to save this fish from this awful fish owner. Hey guys, thank you for watching all the way to the end of the video. It's always a good idea to watch the whole video through, especially if you're trying to support the channel because YouTube recognizes that click through rate with that like watch time sort of deal. I don't know, but hopefully you were entertained the whole way. If you were, please leave a like. We're trying to hit 1,200 this time. 
and subscribe if you haven't already. If you have, thanks so much. There'll be more videos to come and don't forget to get your hands wet.